you know what, y'all? I'm going to tell you what happens when you allow, um, you know, there's a saying called the hate that hate produces. And in fact, it was a very good play back in the um, uh, nation uh, over a half a century ago. Um, because no one understood what that really meant, except for the people in the nation. What is the hate? That the hate produces. Lord have mercy. And when I see stuff like that, uh, in comparison with what I see today, um, I understand that the elite have orchestrated a world that has gotten totally out of hand and they can't do nothing with it. So either it's going to go back to the way it was before the Civil War or either uh, the reset. And it's not going to be as easy a transition as y'all think, okay? What I see on the rise, and 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 this is from a historian point of view, uh, the self-hatred wars have gotten so bad that it's almost orchestrated as if the evildoers have walked y'all right into the trap. That you're supposed to be in. Your self-hatred, first of all. But then on the other end of that, you cannot have what was done to us turned inside out, upside down, revamped, have your mind stripped and forced another culture on you. You cannot have this type of abuse happen to you and don't think there's no residue from that. And for those of y'all who sit back and watch, you love science, and you see how they've orchestrated this society, then you should understand why we have all the cultural wars, why we have all the, the, the sexism wars. I mean, I heard the most craziest thing um, today. I've never heard nothing so pathetic. Um, and it's called divestors. <laughs> Women that divest, I guess, out of the black community um, into, I guess, a white community or where I don't, I don't know. Listen, if you know yourself, you always home. And the fact of the matter is you don't have a God force. You don't have no kind of backbone. If you think and you don't have no faith <laughs> in nothing, if you feel that you can take your blackness and then just move about and become a divester and you can uh, miss everything that's allotted for you. I mean, you're talking to a person that lived in on a, a farm in a pretty much white community, a white uh, city. I think I was maybe the only black person myself. <laughs> Let me tell you something. People are people. They really are. And at the end of the day, I've traveled this world and I've seen that people are people. However, because of the programming, um, you can tell what kind of person that you got to uh, hold to, whether it's a quality person or a person that's not so quality. If you got a person that experienced a lot of trauma and stuff throughout their life, through their childhood on up, Regardless of if they're black or white, they're going to bring a lot of that trauma and drama to you. And they might end up killing you. But either in voluntarily or involuntarily, you receive it. OK, and either they kill you on purpose or they kill you on accident. Nevertheless, you're still dead. OK, so. When I'm seeing these situations where people are actually trying to convince themselves that if they marry outside, they race or if they um, and I like I said, I don't have a problem one way or the other. I have a very, very multicultural family. I'm just going to let you know whether I like it or not. It is what it is. So I've grown to love it. You understand? Because people are people. And if you get caught up in what the media does, you'll end up hating people. OK, for no apparent reason. If you got somebody that rock with you and roll with you and they happen to be a white person or whatever, roll with that. 
Rock with that. Now, will it be difficult for your kids? Yes. Is it difficult for black kids? Yes. So there always are going to be the torns and snares when you brought up in a racist ass country like this, a country that was founded on race. But you have to do your part as a parent to make sure your child stays as open minded as possible in this type of environment. I'm a parent of a 32-year, soon-to-be 33-year-old woman, okay? I have um, a a, a 34-year-old son, and I have countless of children that I've raised, okay? Too many to mention, to enumerate, actually. However, the bottom line is some of them are off on the left foot, some of them on the right foot. That has become what has been part of their learning experience from the environment that they grew up in. Again, I don't try to disparage nobody, but a lot of the mindset of people today, I can't get with. I grew up in a two-parent household. Okay, I didn't grow up with a single mother. Okay, who was all stressed out because she, my mother was a housewife. My father got up and I saw him get up and go to work every single day. Okay? To make our conditions better. He went from a a, a, a slaughterhouse to a pipe fitter. Okay? So I don't know nothing. I don't know. And not only that, he was a minister. Okay? And then he did that full time. My father spoke multiple languages. Okay? So a lot of this stuff that y'all talk about is not so much as a cultural, it's really individual. And what we have in the in the black community is a whole lot of pain bodies running around here. That's why I'm more in line with Dr. Neely Fuller. You, If you know you've been abused for, on whatever level, then it's probably not healthy for you to be involved with a person that's got even more trauma than you. Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up wasting your time and your life and everything trying to convince this person or those people that you love them, that you care about them and that you may not be perfect, but, but, and it's never going to work because their damage is going to be too great that they can't never see you for who you are because they see they self and how they receive it. So that's what you see in all these culture wars. And I sit up here and listen to these women and their own uh, talking about black men. And then you see the black men who are so weak and fragile because they have been raised by women, because they have been raised and they don't have a healthy mindset of what a man looks like to wake up to, for a man to get up and go to work every day, for a man to lead his children in the right direction. And since they're not even privy to that kind of environment, actually, I really feel bad for them. And that, 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 Everybody in my generation had parents, two parents in the household, for better or for worse. So a lot of this stuff y'all talking is strictly from a perspective, in my humble opinion, of people who were raised by dysfunctional people. And we all dysfunctional to a degree. You know, we cannot help but be being uh coming from the hue of people that's been enslaved. So my thing is with that (coughs) is to try (coughs) to get with somebody who doesn't have that kind of abuse issue in their family. It don't necessarily mean you have to go outside the culture. (coughs) But if you do (coughs) and if you're doing it purposely because you feel you're going to get a better deal, you're going to end up like one of those black women who have, like the the, uh, uh, black woman that was just shot and killed by uh, the throat slit by her white counterpart. Madness doesn't have a respect of race. And when you understand that, then you will stop all that foolishness. 
and get on some kind of page where you're not damaging your children with your craziness. It's not even healthy to teach your children to hate black men. And that is so goddamn crazy. It is so uh, counterproductive for you to teach your sons that all black women are gold diggers and, and this, and then you let them watch pornography. I got so mad at individuals and I just had to stop. I had to get out of this circle because I knew a guy that a lot brought a prostitute for his son to have sex with. This is a black man, okay? Because his son had uh was emotionally not a hundred percent together. He was a little bit on the eccentric side, maybe like a Forrest Gump or whatever. The guy was terrorized. He was terrified and he was 20 years old. But these fools decided he needed some pussy in their words. So they went and go got him a prostitute and brought her back for him to have sex with. How many people in the black community think that that's that's normal and that's good? It ain't. It's dysfunctional. And this is the kind of stuff that you got to stop saying um, uh, uh, black people are bad or white people are good. or whatever. Whoever doing this kind of stuff is a dysfunctional individual. And for a child to have to have be raised by people, it's almost like your kids are in a hostage situation because they got to deal with this asinine craziness that some adult individuals have perpetrated on them. You got children who hinge upon their every your, their parents every word because that's how you are in your God in your children's life if you lead them in the right way you God to them until they get to know them for themselves and you gonna take all that power that you have and destroy your child's psyche. Um, that's just like white people when they put the fear in their children about black people. You know different. Except you are just ruined by this thing that they call enslavement. And it's shown in your behavior. It's the self on uh, self-hatred. It's also for white people, for the elitists, this is what your hatred has produced. Nobody trusts nobody. The the elite makes money off all our misery. We strive to find reasons that we are apart, different than we strive to find more reasons that we are like. Because as soon as every single one of us that are poor unite on those type of issues, the marionette couldn't play us like puppets the way you do. When every poor person get together, white, black, brown, no matter to me, gay, straight, it don't matter to me. And realize what the real enemy has been to humanity. Then maybe y'all will stop attacking and eating up your own goddamn selves. Because right now we're not doing a very good job at all. At all. And, 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 and I had to do this today, uh, um, this video. I mean, I had to do it. I just had to do it because it just sitting back watching it sometimes is so, so sad that the puppet master has created a world where we focus on what our differences are as opposed to what we are like about. And once you create up that create that kind of environment, the people are actually fucked. And unless they can get unfucked, we're gonna suffer the same fate as the French when Marie Antoinette said, Oh, just let them eat cake. I'll see y'all in the next video.